for being available for this evening. Thank uh, you. Thank you, thank you, and for your movie also. A very strong, very, very powerful and interesting movie. So uh, I'm sure the audience have a lot of questions, but uh, yeah. I will start uh, with the first one uh, as usual. Start, start with the gentleman with glasses. No, I'm kidding, I, I don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, eh, come sapete lui non ci può vedere ma noi vediamo lui <laughs> ok <laughs> ok so um, my first question is uh, is this one um, you, you decided to make a movie based on a novel from a Swedish uh, writer um, and uh, this novel is about border, borders but uh, right. uh, and borders are very complicated places uh, yeah. with a lot of uh, points of view and, uh, and different ideas can be born just uh, being on a border does it have something to do with uh, your having personally crossed uh, different borders in your life uh, this choice yeah I mean, if anybody knows about the complexity of border issues, it's you guys in Italy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that um, it definitely has helped that I, you know, have been sort of in in migration or exile or travel or whatever you call it, crossing different borders. But I also think that the borders that are the subject of this, this story, our, our movie, are not necessarily the borders that are concrete between countries. Um, it's more about your inner border, the border between you and yourself, your different parts of you, different characters or personalities that you have or everybody has within themselves. Um, because I, I really think that we're not one person, you know, as much as we think of ourselves as one person, we're not, we have different characters, different, different personas. And, you know, sometimes we are in different situations, we change so much that we are not a person. Yeah. So that is the sort of border I'm talking about. Ok, uh, just a moment. Uh, qualcuno ha bisogno di traduzione? Se qualcuno ha bisogno di traduzione alzi la mano perché sennò andiamo avanti pure con l'inglese. Se avete bisogno ditemelo che... Ok, ok, perfetto. Apparently uh, our audience uh, tonight doesn't need translation, so we can go on uh, without it. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, great. Um, and, and so uh, you were attracted uh, from this more profound, more this deeper aspect of uh, the border, a psychological, cultural one. Yeah, I think that if you need to do a movie about uh, border, border security or migration crisis, you should do a movie about that. You know, I... I think the last thing the world wants is uh, somebody like me doing a movie about that, like with trolls, you know. Uh, of course, we have all these political identity, you know, there are a lot of different subjects and themes in the background of the movie, but I didn't want it to be, you know, concrete about the, the, the political stuff and comment on something that is going on right now because it, in that way in that way it felt it could also become disrespectful you know to become too metaphorical about something like that people actually suffer about you know yeah but but you decided anyway to start just from a political border because uh, your character is uh, is just there it doesn't implicate that you wanted to be uh, open in a political aspect but anyway it is there uh, i mean in the background as you said no absolutely uh, and i think this is this is how it is how to how you perceive the reality you know um, I think the reality is that 
politics is about power and it's about who wants to grab power, who wants to defend that, who wants to fight for it and what are the implications of it. And this is something that you, you know, experience, you know, bit in relationships, there's always a politic. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, you know, this is not, I mean, when I do a movie, the important thing for me is to sort of, to relate my, my worldview you know, in its, in its like wholeness. Uh, and I think reality can be brutal and it can be poetic. It can be honest. It can be fake. It can be, you know, crappy. It can be super nice. And the important thing is it's all of those things simultaneously. And I want to give that sense that it, there are some, so many contradictions and so many different aspects of it. Yeah, yeah. I found very interesting that you used a uh, uh, sort of a fantastic uh, uh, kind of characters and, and subject, but uh, uh, in very realistic, uh, um, uh, in a very realistic way. And through this, uh, I, I felt very strong uh, uh, the, the theme of nature. Uh, I, I mean, uh, maybe what is what was for me strongest uh, was just uh, a sort of a call to nature, to nature, a sort of return to nature of the main character. Mm. We we don't know which nature. We don't know what is nature, what is normal, what is monster in the mm. movie. It's all border crossings. But uh, nature is anyway something very very powerful. Mm. Well, and it's sort of funny because I'm really not grown up in nature. I'm sort of almost allergic to nature. <laughs> you know, I, I'm actually like literally allergic to nature. Like <laughs> I cannot, I cannot like spend a lot of time in nature without being allergic. But, but it's also you think about different examples of how the best movie about Jesus Christ is made by a gay communist. You know, with Pasolini did this beautiful movie. Um, and you think, well, maybe that's sort of when you're not like in my in my case, when I don't have this sort of uh, relationship with nature where I feel that I'm at home or um, that I can see through it, it's more mystical. It's this place that is... Um, you know, I I haven't spent much time, everything is sort of mysterious, then that's the sort of nature I think about when I think about nature. And that's the sort of nature that I try to depict in the story. I mean, not that, not, not that it's like Lord of the Rings or something, but, but that it has a certain mis- mystery. Uh-huh. Um, and, and that mystery lies within the atmosphere of it and within the sort of energy of it more than with being like inhibited by strange, creature, strange creatures. And, and that stra- strange energy that is slightly over supernatural is also the way basically Tina is, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I will now ask uh, the audience if they have uh, some other questions. Avete qualche domanda? Sappiamo che Ali non ha tantissimo tempo, quindi se ce l'avete fatela subito, osate, non siate timidi. Don't be shy. Yeah, don't be shy, I don't see you anyways. <laughs> Now it's the time to tell me what you really think. <laughs> uh, vuoi che traduco io? Vuoi dire... Ok, ok. It's not a question, it's a comment. Mm. Um, 
she's saying that uh, she uh, appreciated, she liked a lot uh, the fact how Tina discovered uh, his uh, strange sexuality. Mm. And uh, it's very delicate how through this sort of multiple uh, discovering things about herself and especially this uh, aspect of, of uh, her uh, sexuality, um, Tina is really uh, perceiving herself not just like uh, something different uh, from normal, but uh, such as uh, a, a being in uh, herself, uh, a being with a personality, with an identity, with uh, dignity, etc. So it was just uh, uh, appreciating, she was appreciating this, uh, this yeah. part. Yeah, and, and that's sort of the whole idea of the movie that um, I try to turn the norm, you know, on, it, on, it, on its head and say that usually we look at those people, um, whoever they are, uh, the others from our perspective and they're strange and we are equally strange when they look at us from their perspective and, and the only thing we have to show for it's that it's our numbers you know uh, otherwise there's no other like major difference between like you know our strangeness and their strangeness or our sexuality or their sexuality but you know it, it's you you you're trained as a social animal to think that if there is enough people who think like you then there's something superior about your your way of thinking which is i think can be also dangerous you know yeah of course c'è qualcun altro che vuole dire qualcosa o che ha qualche domanda o commento esprimetevi liberamente non sarete ah c'è una domanda eccola qua uh, hi Thank you for the film, I really appreciate it. And um, I'd like to ask you if you ever read uh, Men and Trolls by Selma Lagerlof that I uh, read and I found uh, similarities in the story of the, the troll. And... Is that the story where um, there's this family who adopted this kid and then... Uh, yeah, they, they, the mother comes back and wants the kid back. And mother is a troll, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. I, I actually, yeah, I got it, but I didn't read it because at some point early on, I decided I read the Wikipedia page on trolls, ah. and I cut, sort of decided that was enough. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> because I didn't, yeah, you know, I didn't want it to become like the troll master. Of yeah, universe. because they, they are the trolls, like uh, the re, the real, uh, like um, they are the, the the real trolls. It's not uh, um, your um, imagination or yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I mean, s s uh, it's funny because I, I haven't read that, but when you say it, it makes sense because I think Selma Lagerlöf is is one of the f the early um you know one of the early initiators of uh, sort of nordic magical realism uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah and this is basically some you know this is some, what we're doing here you know sort of trying to create a sort of um synthetic synthesis of what you would call natural and supernatural in a sort of a third mm -hmm or third third view or, or like magical realism. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, also, you know, not that you brought it up, one thing that has been interesting about the whole mythology of trolls and why, you know, these, these this mythology and not everything else is the fact that in, you know, different versions of troll mythology in, in like different Nordic countries and different interpretations, they're always ambivalent, you know? Like mm -hmm. when 
when you hear about or or expect to see a vampire movie for example you know that they're gonna like suck blood and they want to pray and there's a certain set of behaviors you know about yeah with trolls uh you don't you never know because like at, in some stories they're like just a little bit clumsy and stupid in some stories they're like really vicious and and dangerous in some they're like actually funny and and like cute so i really like this idea of like you don't know this is like a quintessential ambivalence you don't know who they are and maybe they don't even know themselves who they are and that's a sort of yeah very core of tina <laughs> yeah 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 it's true thank you yeah sure So it was a really a very plastic uh, metaphor that you could uh, use as you wanted uh, the troll. Yeah, uh, and that was also why I was telling the gentleman, um, that was also why I didn't want to know more about it, because I thought that this is, here's my chance of forming it in the way, like taking the sort of the surface of the the metaphor or or the mythology and forming it the way that it fits what I think about the story should be and the character should be, instead of me becoming a slave of a set of, you know, myths yeah. or 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 narrations, mm -hmm. and uh, and in that way it suited me perfectly. You know, if I did a zombie movie, I would feel like you know I I have to create something new in the zombie tradition or whatever, and then would already there would be trouble. <laughs> Uh, there is another question. Sure. A very short question. How was to work with the two main actors? Um, the short answer, it was great. Uh, the longer answer is it took a long time to find them. And once I found them, um, I just knew that they were the right people to do this and uh, that they had, you know, each in their own abilities, they, they were like, you know, both Ava and Aero, excellent character actors. And they, they bring this whole logic of a character to life. It doesn't matter for them if they're playing a dog or a president or a troll, they would still find the core of the, or, or or the logic of that character, and they they animate that. And I, you know, our deal was that they have a lot of freedom, and they take responsibility for their characters. And I'm more sort of their instructor, like the personal trainer. I would tell them more of this, less of that, but I don't. I wouldn't go and tell them what to do. Um, and this worked great for us because, you know, they, you know, every time I came on set, they were very well prepared and they were, you know, I was, I had the luxury of choosing from different, you know, in interesting takes they had on character and scene. Um, and, you know, usually speaking, I don't have a crazy complicated method in my name or like, I, I don't, I still don't have an Ali Abbasi method. Uh, but I think if I have anything close to that is to take my time and <clears throat> choose the right people and then, you know, try to work with them, try to work with their impulses and refine it um, as, as we go through, to, through, the, through the movie together. Um. Uh, about the actors, uh, I, I read right. that they had uh, uh, to go through a very long uh, prosthetic uh, work every every time, every day, uh, nearly four right. hours of uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, how was that uh, particular experience for them? How could they? go through that uh, so long <laughs> preparation was it uh, something that could help or or not well you know i think it should have been hell for them to sit through that those four hours 